there is a hot seat, and then there is a hot seat. There are those who could handle a hot seat, and there are those who simply can't. Can our new national football coach handle the hot seat? We'll find out today. He's here. This is the Ascension Football Show. Come on back. This is a great honor for me, a privilege um, to continue to serve. Getting them ready for the Gold Cup qualifiers. First we can shoot Get them here. in a camp environment to, to give them the opportunity. All right, we are back. This is the Ascension Football Show. I'm Joel Villafano. He represented this country on the football field with heart and soul. Made his debut in April 1994 against Barbados. Quickly became a fixture on the national team and went on to become the most capped national player of all time. Still, 117 caps according to the records to his name. After hanging up his boots in 2006, he announced himself as one of the top pundits analyzing the game here in Trinidad Tobago and across the Caribbean. But coaching has always been very close to his heart. He has coached successfully at all levels here in Trinidad Tobago, from the SSFL secondary schools football, to the Super League, to the Pro League, and also has a, had a stint as a youth national coach. Today, he is in the hot seat as our new national senior football coach. Angus Evers here. Good day, sir. How are you doing, my brother? <laughs> With an introduction like that, <laughs> I probably can just walk up this. <laughs> <laughs> that was that yeah, was that, that was you in a nutshell. Come to have a meal, Joe. Um, I I I I asked myself the question when the announcement when the announcement came. Um, is Angus Eve ready for this job? Um, because. Over the years, I'm sure you would have had eyes on the possibility and the honor of coaching a national team. But this is a very, very different time in, in football in Trinidad Tobago, Angus. And I asked myself, and I was just questioning myself, is Angus Eve ready for this job? Do you feel ready for this job at this point in time, Angus? Yeah, um, it, as you said, Joel, this is a great honor for me, a privilege um, to continue to serve my country in whatever capacity that I can. And um, I see this as another stepping stone into um, the direction which I have been preparing my whole life for. Um, and yeah, uh, if I didn't think that I was ready to do the job, I, I would not accept the job. Uh, when I got called that Sunday afternoon and, 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 and offering up the uh, position, um, it didn't take me more than five minutes to say yes. Um, because as you rightly said, um, preparation meets success. Um, when when I, I, I was um, always contemplating and looking and watching the players that we have and looking at teams that we will have to play. So from that standpoint, I think I would have been doing the groundwork um, in preparation for the job because I always wanted to do, if it's not the Trinidad team, it would be a, 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 another team of, of, of equal um, standing. But it's, it's, it's even more... Um, of a privilege for me being um, my home team. Look back at your career in football, when you started as a young footballer um, and you came through the ranks, when you came as a sort of fiction national team and then post your playing days, Angus, would you, I mean, in any footballer turned coach, would you say this is a dream come true for you here? Yeah, um, every every step of uh, my career would have been a dream come true for me. You know, when I, I was a player and I represented my community, that would have been a dream come true because I grew up watching um, Ron Lafferty and, um, you know, Marlon Waterman and Hayden Waterman and all these these guys. And then, you know, watching the strike squad and watching their exploits. 
I then wanted to be a part of a national team and I achieved that. And, um, you know, we played in a Youth World Cup in 1991 with my mentor, Bertil Sinclair. And um, that was, you know, each phase of me playing um, would be an honor. And, and every step that I take would be leading me to the next step that I want to take in football. And, and becoming, and I said, when you got that call that Sunday afternoon, I mean, what was the, what was the initial e emotion? Um, it's so funny. I had emotions for the last five days before that Sunday because um, it was well documented in the press um, that a lot of people thought that I was the best option for the job. Um, I did not apply for the job. Um, um, so I, I guess that um, the, the candidates that they had, when they reviewed them, um, they came up with my name. Uh, a lot of people were supporting me. Even I didn't have the opportunity and people were calling the phone and I said, I don't know anything about it except what I'm reading in the press. You told me that. Yeah. And I, and I mean, you and I go yeah, way, yeah. So way back. I, I, I really didn't know anything. You, you lied to me on this. No, no. no. <laughs> I, I didn't know anything. Um, all I knew is what was, was bandied about in yeah. the press and all the pundits who um, were surmising who would probably get the job. A couple of names was in the mix. And um, when they called me that Sunday afternoon, um, you know, I was privileged and honored to have the opportunity. You, you, you made the statement, preparation meets success. Um, and would you say over the course of your career thus far, you were in preparation for this task now at hand? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, every, every journey that I would have gone through, every um, team that I would have coached, uh, every interview that I would have done and, and look at and, and analyze games from, from that standpoint and being able to, you know, dissect games and, and commentate on them and all these kinds of things. All of these things will prepare me for this. And, um, you know, so the preparation has been there. I have gone through all the processes. I've done all my badges. I've, I've, you know, it's, it's just now to go out and perform. Um, nothing in life is easy. Um, but everything takes a step at a time. This is a very difficult job. I'm not going to complain and say about the time. I'm not going to complain or talk about COVID or anything of that sort, simply because I looked at all of those things already and I've accepted the job, so there's no excuses. Big bull statement right up there. I'll, I'll dig into that big bull statement a little later, but um, for not, not every player that would have done well at international level that attempts to coach, it works out for them. I've seen you coach over the years at, at, with a degree of success. Coaching comes naturally to Anglesey. Was, was, was that something that, that over the years, since you've been involved in coaching, came naturally to you? Yeah, I think um, because for me, it's uh, everything that you do, God is, is totally involved in it. And I think it was a God gift that I was a player. It's a God gift. Um, I pray for wisdom and understanding all the time. And uh, I remember Bertil Sinclair playing me in different positions. And as a young kid, you're, you're telling yourself, why am I playing here? Why am I playing there? And then Kenny Joseph did the same thing with me because primarily when I started national team, um, I was a striker. I used to be scoring goals for fun. And then I moved to the flank um, because at that time we started getting a lot of players who played abroad. And so when the players who are playing abroad, their first preference and the players who are playing back here. So I then have to um, reinvent myself every time. And to be honest, um, even little conversations with, with Dwight and how to screen the ball, how to turn as a striker, what he was learning in England at that time. Russell, um, his vision, his, his awareness of the field. So me being able to play multiple positions, David Nackett, um, the way that he controls a midfield, um, so all of these guys would have been giving me experience that they would have been gaining on the outside. And I was like a sponge, um, just taking in all of it. And my ability to adapt to any system that the teams would play and position, I think, augurs well for me coaching a team. You mentioned the name Bertil Sinclair. Um, and uh, you, you mentioned it a couple of times. And I, I know that Bertil Sinclair is ranked high in your mind. Um, he, he has been a mentor for yep. you. I, I, still I, is. Yeah. Still is. Still is. Um, the impact that he would have had on not only your playing career, but I'm just interested in finding out from you based on what you, you said he played you in different <laughs> positions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Bertil as a coach yeah. back then, as a manager of a team, yeah. 
what would you take from Berto going into this job now? Um, firstly, um, discipline. Um, the pillars, uh, discipline, hard work, and um, teamwork, most of all. No man is an island. No team. If we have 10 Russell at the PWI, I don't think that we can win a game. Naturally, Russell is not a defensive-minded player. Um, vice versa, David Naked or, or any, if you have 10 Clayton Inns. So each player has a role to play for the benefit of the team. And that concept of team and that concept of discipline and, and passion um, to wear the jersey, uh, whether it be whatever team you're playing for at the point in time, you need to have the passion for the jersey. You need to have that tenacity for the team. And there's a, as a band of brothers, you know, I, I saw Ansel Elcock today, and I was so happy. We, we don't see one another um, that much. But if I call Arnold Dorica, we're still good today because of all the things that we would have gone through on the field. The greatest lessons that you could learn in life is in a sporting environment. You would have also worked very closely um, both, I think, as a player and as a coach under Terry Fennick. You would have played for Terry Fennick at San Juan Chablote. Um, I think at one point, if I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me, yes. my memory is not all that good. Yeah. Um, but if, if you would have also been an assistant coach yes. to Terry Fennick. Yes. Um, so you, I, I mean, you would have worked under Terry Fennick, yeah. player and, 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 yeah. and, and the coach. Um, you, I, I want to position the question properly because I don't want to put you in a position that, that will be um, it was speaking your, 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 your predecessor, but when Terry got the job as the coach, did you think he was able to handle the job as national coach of this country based on all what Terry Fennick could have done in this, in this country? Um, I, I can't answer that question because by then I wouldn't have been working with him for a very long time. Um, but what I can say when I used to work with him in, initially, um, in the early when he just came, it was all new. It was all, you know, we, we, we didn't know. I heard Jamal Shabazz said it best that Terry changed the pro league in the sense of the intensity of play and stuff like that. Um, and, and the organization at that point in time. Um, I haven't worked with him since back then, so I don't want to make any pronouncements, except I supported Terry 100%. Um, as my role uh, at the time at uh, the Coaches Association simply because he's in the job and, I, and he's, he's, he's doing my country. So I would support whatever coach that they put in, in front of us, whether it be foreign, local or whatever, um, to, to, to make pronouncements on whether he was ready for the job or not. That wasn't in my hands. Uh, the powers that be thought that he was and they gave him the job. Um, so that, that, that is where they have to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I want to just look at the state of football for me just a bit, Angus, because you would have literally experienced, I'm going back in my mind, it's, it's three decades, three decades of, of football, as I said, as a player, as a coach now. Um, and going back to your time, through your playing days, to what you see now, how would you rate the, the, the state of the game on the field of play. Um, Bearing in mind that we're still producing wonderful yeah, talent. Yeah, we are. Uh, but the state of the game as, as, as over the three decades and, and, and what you see before well, you Well, know. I, I, I must say that off the field affects on the field. Right. And it, I, we, it, we'll get to off the field. Yeah, it goes without <laughs> saying. Um, but on the pitch, um, I think um, there, there, there seems to have been a lot of underlying issues that would have affected the players' performances on the pitch. Um, you know, and, and, and yeah, yeah, mainly on the pitch, you saw in the St. Vincent game, for instance, where the team performed well, I thought, you know, um, St. Vincent, I'd never thought that they were in the same class with us. Um, we should have, in my humble opinion, as a Trinidadian supporter at the time, um, thought that we should have come out of that group easily with the, with the players that we, that we actually had on the park. Um, but there was a bit of passion, there was, there's, there was a, a bit of die-hard. The only difference in the Bermuda game as opposed to their players against us. Bahamas? Bahamas, sorry. Bahamas game, uh, Bahamas game sorry. Mm -hmm. Is the, the fight, the aggression, 
the, 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 you know, they want to fight for the shoot. They want to fight for the country. That was the only difference in the two sets of players. Why it happened, I don't know. You didn't see, you didn't see our fight. You didn't see our passion. No, I didn't that, see it. And, 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 you know, they, they, as I said, there's, there could be underlying things that we don't know about. So I don't want to make um, any pronouncements um, on the players' performance in that game. But I think the players of themselves would have said it in the press. And, um, <clears throat> you know, going forward is something that has to be addressed. State of the game, though. I, I don't want to sidestep my, my, my question. Um, we, 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 I interviewed you too long to, to, to not allow you to sidestep my question. <laughs> I think our game is in good stead. Um, has, has, has our game deteriorated? It may sound like an obvious question, but has our game deteriorated based on all the surrounding influences that may have affected it? But has our game deteriorated over the last three decades in your mind? The answer would be yes. Yeah. And... Uh, and, and deteriorated to the point of ground zero, because that's how football fans feel. Football fans feel that it really makes sense supporting trying to be go again. But this has been happening for a while now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I, me and Ansel was just reminiscing for the five minutes that we had. And um, we would play on the 16 and the stadium would be full. Yeah. Uh, I can't tell you the last time that the stadium was full. Yeah. And i talking about World Cup games, whether it be Stephen Hart, Dennis Lawrence, uh, under the arena, yeah. um, St. Feet. Uh, I mean, we could go back and back. It's a while since we've been able to fill the stadiums, and um, so that would that, that would say something, you know, that people, um, the normal fans, are not uh, compelled. And um, I know you're dodging it, but it's it's a lot of off-field stuff that yeah. is really causing that. I won't dodge it. I won't dodge it. I, I'll come to it because I, I know it impacts. But I want to ask you a direct question before we take the first break. In that, with all that you would have known experience, seen for yourself, um, and, and, and admitting just now or here that, that yes, Strider Bigos football is, has deteriorated over the last three decades. Your first step in trying to get the fans back interested, get the football right, what's the first step in your mind as national coach? Inclusion. The word is inclusion. Um, we have to include everybody in the process. Uh, we have a very gang-like mentality in football. Gang-like? Gang-like. And what I mean, fractions. So, like, I'm from Karana. So, we have a, a group of men from up the hill. We have a group of men from over the river. We have a group of men from over the hill. And you can't go over the hill, and you can't go over the river, and you can't go down the hill. And what, what happens is that we have, we have the pro league fighting one, pulling in one direction. We have the Super League pulling in a different direction. We have the Colleges League pulling in their own direction. And then we have all the associations. The only how um, that we could get football back the way it has to be um, is to actually bring everybody back in together and have one goal and one purpose going forward. Um, we cannot have our own agendas if we're trying to fix football. If we genuinely want to fix football, we all must come together. Uh, I am proposing to have a meeting with the Pro League coaches uh, on Friday, um, albeit, you know, in the times that we're living in, it may have to be on Zoom. And that is because I'm representing them. I'm representing the local coaches. I'm representing the coaches who actually coaches the players that I am now going to be coaching. How can I not have consultation with them? How can I not meet and talk to them? Because we all have to be on the same um, part going forward. We may, may do it a little bit different, um, but the goal, the end goal is, is, is supposed to be the same. Can Angus Eve fix national football on the field at least? He's here and we're getting into the mind of our new national coach. Right here on the Ascension Football Show. Come on back. The situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladinson come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview him, eh? But how can you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? 
I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. What for champion? Hey, Ascension! Located at Magnificent Mall, number 271 Southern Main Road, McBean, Cuba. Amanze Del Cafe. Happiness begins with brew. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. Fun DDI experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1 
0242-2242-1653. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited. The best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. Angus Eve is the new head coach of Toronto Tobago, taking over from uh, Terry Fennec, uh, who has been relieved of his duties as Toronto Tobago now surges forward in a new direction where football on the field is concerned. Angus Eve's very first task is gathering a team, getting them ready for the Gold Cup qualifiers first week in July. That's right. First game against Montserrat. Angus Eve is here and we're trying to pick his brain as best as we can because you said something at the top, um, made a note of it. You're not complaining. We're in a pandemic. It is what it is. You're not making any excuses up front. I thought that was very interesting because many times people go into a situation and they start saying, well, remember this is the case and that is the case and the boot's orange. I don't have a, I don't have a black boot. So, and they start putting things in place mm -hmm. just in case. Just in case. You, you, you took the opposite you took the opposite direction to that, Angus. You say you're not complaining. It is what it is, but you have a job to do. That's how, that's how you feel. Yeah, most definitely. Um, why take the job and you come to complain about the job, about the difficulties of the job? They didn't give it. They give you the job because they think that you can fix the problem. And you took the job because you think you can fix the problem. So why gravitate on the problem? Um, I tend to look for more for the solution than the problem. You know, losing a game... I learn more losing a game than winning a game because we could play a bad game and win a game. But when you lose a game, you tend to um, go into more depth into anal analyzing and um, trying to figure out what you know what was the issues, what could I fix, what could I. So losing a game actually makes you dig a little bit deeper. Um, so in this case, I I, I knew all the re um, the restrictions before uh, coming into the job. So then why complain about it? If I accepted the job, I should have said at the point in time, I don't want the job, there's too much to do, don't want to have anything to do with it. Having said that, let me push you a little because it is a difficult task. Um, I would just think, uh, what would the situation now, I think the players are in quarantine. Um, you have a new technical staff now to get to know the players, meet the players, um, forge a new direction. And I think you have, what, Two weeks, if so much. <laughs> yeah, <two weeks. laughs> I think probably less than two weeks before that first game against Montserrat. So I appreciate your 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 your, your openness where that is concerned. But how difficult do you think the job is? It's complicated. <laughs> um, and COVID has made it a lot more complicated um, because an international manager normally gets about five days with the FIFA window before the actual game. Yeah. Um, and that's with all things. Yeah. All things being all equal. Things, and all things set. <laughs> yeah, you, know, yeah. you know your players, yeah, you know yeah. your system. You yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so just put that, that, that in with all yeah. those all those things in place. Yeah. A league is running uh, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really difficult for the local players. I feel for them because, you know, I, I, I really appreciate the local players. Um, but it's difficult for them because they're not in season. So you could be fit, but you're not match fit because you're not playing football and you're not moving, doing all the dynamic stuff and that kind of thing. So, and getting bump and all, all the thing that goes along with a, a match um, because of the pandemic. So they had a bit of disadvantage for that. I am trying to see if I can actively get them in a camp environment to, to give them the opportunity to, to work. Um, it may be that we have to work a little bit more than they normally work. Um, but uh, I want to try at least to give them the fair opportunity. Uh, it's not going to be fair <laughs> because it's uh, a lot of things are not in their favor at this point in time. But um, I, I, I would want to address them as, as best as possible. And, and if I do go on after August, you know, then we'll have more time to do a lot more different stuff and, and have a lot more avenues that we could play practice games and give them exposure. How long are you in the job for? Two and a half months in the initial stage. Two and a half months? Till the end of August. And is that based on you meeting a requirement? Yeah, um, it's well documented. Uh, the normalization committee, they went through a process. Uh, apparently, they had about three or four candidates, uh, as uh, they said. I, I didn't ask them who were the other persons. Um, and they said out of that, um, the panel of Mr. Cornell, 
um, Anthony Sherwood, uh, I think it's Richard Chinapu, very well, well known names in football. Um, they would have come up with my name after they went through the, uh, the selection process and then they offered me the opportunity. What happens after two and a half months? What are you expected to do after two and a half months? Well, they said they want to go through the process of um, hiring a coach. Um, I see it that I have the opportunity. I always tell my players, if, if you have the starting jersey, you don't give it away. Um, so I'm going to work my, my damnedest best um, to not give away the jersey that I, that I have. Um, so the person in, is, in, is in possession of the jersey. Um, I'm hoping to keep the jersey. The Gold Cup qualification is tied into the future of your job as national coach? Uh, no parameters have been set uh, by the normalization committee. I think they understand the gravity um, of the job at hand in the sense of the time, the restrictions and all that kind of thing. So um, I don't know if that is a parameter, um, but I think um, if I can improve the team, and, and visibly, people can see that the team has improved in a very, very short space of time. I think it would all go well for me. Yeah. What's your philosophy, Angus, where football on the field as a coach is, is, is concerned? Because philosophies where coaches are concerned can affect how a team plays, why a team does this, why a team, team does that. What's your philosophy? And it will also determine the players that you select right. based Correct. on the, the philosophy that you have. Um, well, I like to be, I think everybody knows, I like to be resolute in the back. Um, I do give the forward thinking players, the creative players, the freedom. You don't tell Messi, stand up on the left hand side and just um, within a structural uh, organization, um, I allow them to be themselves. So if I pick a Joel Villafana and he's good at screening and turning up the ball, I put you on the pitch. And I think that was one of the key things uh, with Bertil, if you remember, when we were in that Gold Cup, I think you spoke to David about it when he missed the penalty. Yeah. And that team was well put together. And that day, Bertil normally played 4 3 4 3 3. And that game, he, that whole tournament, he played 3 5 2. And simply because you had an Ansel Elcock on one side, a Tony Roger who could gallop and go down the one side. You have Ronnie Moj and Shul and David and Marvin Andrews, and they at the back, big, strong, quick defenders. Uh, myself, David, and Russell was the engine room with Dwight and these guys up front. So he picked that team because of the personnel that he had. So, but the philosophy would not change. The way that you want to play, the movement that you would want, the dynamic, the passing, the tempo of the game. Despite so, the system change. Despite the system change. It's different talking about systems as philosophy because Pep does it all the time. He plays forward thinking football, but he would play three at the back at some times. He would play four in the midfield at some times, you know. So, it's, the philosophy doesn't change, and my philosophy is moving the ball, um, passing it early, getting touches all around, getting the ball forward as quickly as possible, and, and try to create chances. How do you feel? You, as I said, you have come through the three decades um, mm -hmm. where I could, I'm making this on whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but the reality is, um, uh, I suppose I probably just. Well, like, I started just young. I started young too. Yeah, so yeah. We, you know, we, yeah. Yeah. we were born in the seventies, so we we we. we yeah. um, how do you feel, and now that you're head coach, I think the question is, 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 is more applicable, where the Trent Bagonian style of football, our players, the, 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 the type of footballer that we naturally produce, when Gali Cummins took the team in, 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 in the 80s, he developed what he called Kaisoka soccer. It moved into the soccer warriors. And, 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 and <laughs> how do you feel about setting up our style of football, our brand of football. Does that form part of your philosophy? I think our our style is close to the Brazilian style, we would think, right? The flair and these flicks and these drills. And of course, we want to implement that because we have those type of players. But we have not reproduced a, a Russell Latapi and a Clint Marcel for a while. Um, speedy wing type players has always been our game. Running dribbling, Jared Nixon, Arnold Doric, I mean, I could call names at the top of my, of my head, you know. Um, um, and we then haven't produced players like We that. haven't produced players of that ilk for a while. And then we, we got a philosophy that, um, you remember we started picking primarily the foreign-based players. When the foreign-based players go away, 
they, they, they changed the game to suit where they're playing in Europe. It happened with Brazil. When Brazil played in 1982, Brazil was playing with the flair and the flicks and the dummies with Socrates and all these guys. And the coach felt that that style wasn't winning for them. And in 86, he changed and he brought big, strong guys like Mazzino and, and different Dunga and these type of players. So style of plays is relative to the type of players that you would have. Um, so you have to be very careful of the this, this system that you play because of the players that you have. Players and players determine the style and players, the, you could want to play a system, but you just don't have the, the type of players to do so. You, you may want to play a style, but you don't have the players to do so. What do you do? As a coach, that is where the challenge comes in. We're not like uh, Man City or, let's use Man City. Pep went and buy yeah. two wing banks for $50 million. We, we, you can't, you can't <laughs> go and buy players. We can't do that. We, <laughs> have to, we have to use the players that yes, we have. Yeah, he yeah. wanted a striker. He went and get um, Gabriel Jesus. He, he wanted a midfielder. He went and get De Bruyne. He wanted another one. He, you know, we can't do that. So we have to use the players that we have and put them forward a system. Yes, I would want to play expansive football, but it will be dictated by the players that we have. Is it at this stage, um, and, and I keep going back before I come forward, Angus, because many people, and I suppose in, in our generation, and even after, that would have seen a level of success, especially when a 2006 team went to the World Cup and we are World Cup, World Cup players and so on, and now we watch and say, you know, our, our standard of football, we'd be battling to beat Bahamas, and that would not have been the case 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, we were Caribbean kings and, and, and that sort of thing. Do you accept, as national coach now, that we are, at, at, at the base, battling with Caribbean teams to work our way back up into CONCACAF, let's just say? Do you accept that based on the players that you have to work with now? I accept it based on the results that we have been getting. Um, the results will, will, will definitely say that. And um, when you go back into the annals, it would, it would say that this is what we were doing back then, and this is what we're doing now by performance base. Um, I remember playing, and we were 29th in the world. Now we are 100 and, and, some, and, and 9 or whatever it is. Um, so that will say that we have fallen back tremendously by just the rankings if we use that. So it's no secret um, that, that we have fallen back. Um, and there's a number of factors why, um, but also it's very relative to say that we are not developing because we have a lot of guys still getting contracts on the outside. It, it's not the lucrative contracts, uh, but people still taking our guys. And when you look at people like uh, Jamaica and, and, and Curacao, and they, um, a lot of the players that they get are expats. It's players who actually have, haven't born in Jamaica or wasn't developed in Jamaica. Just using them as an example. And now that um, they, 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 they didn't make their, their homeland, which is England, but they, their parents' background enables them to play for Jamaica. Coaching, coaching a national team with, just as I said, less than two weeks to get a team ready for the tournament. Um, just for people who may not be aware, <laughs> um, we play Montserrat. Yes, on the 2nd. On the 2nd of July, we... I believe Cuba and French Guiana has a game that they will play yeah. and we play the winner of that game. Yeah. All things being equal. Yeah. If I am if I'm if Angus is to put on his his um his analyst hat and his yeah. pundit hat, he would say that Cuba would come out of that game <laughs> <laughs> if I was to ask him to predict. So albeit Montserrat, if we get past Montserrat, we play Cuba. Um, before we get All friends get a football. Yeah. Game. You see, you see, no, if I'm asking that, he would take Cuba off the top of your head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm now doing the coaching. and yeah. uh, Different hats. Yeah, you, you, I, I would have thought that um, I, I wouldn't see French playing the way they played yesterday, albeit they won the game, but they played a very defensive style. And they have so much attacking players. So, And football is so even now because players, uh, teams have players playing all over the world. So it's not no... You can't just say the name of the team and yeah. think that you can walk over them. So French Guyana has the possibility to bring in people from France. So we don't know. Um, we, we're researching, but we don't know as yet. So we have to look at it. I think that is a, a problem some of our coaches have. We look at the possibility of the bigger team. You need to look at the both teams. 
So you, 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 you're assessing, or you're assessing the road ahead of... Uh, yes, and, and, and as I said, so first, everybody is in that. The first game is Montserrat, and then either Cuba or French Guyana. And both of them are being assessed. And both of them being assessed. Uh, what, what does that road look like to you? Mission impossible? Uh, no, we see the teams play. Um, the, teams, the teams are good. It's difficult, we said already. Um, we, we saw the teams play in the, in the World Cup qualifying, so you know, we have that evidence of, of seeing them play. Um, of course, things can change in a couple of weeks, a couple of new players come in, maybe that player is injured, we don't know. Um, but we have a general idea um, and we continue to do the research um, on them. Uh, but we, we have to get ourselves right, uh, because if we're not right, all the research we do on them comes for nothing. So we need to concentrate on what we are doing home and what we are doing in our house um, and make sure that we are comfortable with what we're doing. You know, I suppose you, you, you look, you try to pick a national team coach head. Um, as fans, what are our chances was? Do we have a chance here? Because we know, we know what we know what we just did. We now fall, fell out of our World Cup qualifying race. Um, chips are down. Players probably, you know, players' heads drop a bit. Um, you go into the situation now. Do we have a chance of at least trying to get to the Concacaf World Cup? Yes, we always have a chance. The possibility is always there. Once you believe, um, you don't you don't kill people's dreams. Uh, once you, there's a dream, and we will try to impress upon the players. Um, this is another dream we have. We have since um, Burton Sinclair. That was 2000, 2000 where we got to the World Cup. Um, the Gold Cup, sorry, finals. Uh, we haven't done anything except for Steve nothing past the quarter, reach the quarter final stage. Uh, I think, yeah, reach the quarter final. So we, we, we still have goals, we still have objectives. So you just put different um, targets in the players' mind um, uh, of what they're working towards. Um, so they're working towards goal cup success. World Cup success has gone, that is behind the door. Now we're working towards goal cup success. Yeah. You're only in the job at this stage for two and a half months, but I know you have big ambitions, Angus Eve. I know you want, as you said, to keep the to keep the coach jersey. Yes. Um, so when we come back, I want to talk about the possibility of football starting back. We we are getting hinting that local football is a, is about to start back. The importance of that and your thoughts of what needs to happen where local football is concerned. Um, and, and club football here in Toronto to be going the direction that it's heading because right now it hangs in the balance. We're coming back. This is the Ascension Football Show. Pest control is a pain, but you don't have to go it alone. If you're a business that needs someone who will fix your problems point blank, go with the brand that's tested. Go with Terminix. Born almost a century ago in Memphis, Tennessee, Terminix International's mission has been to spread its innovations across the world through its integrated pest and termite management system, reducing the infestation of pests and vermin. Our Trinidad franchise neutralizes the threat of tropical insects and ensures that companies, from food production to hospitality, protect their investment and get the maximum value from our relationship. And we've been doing it well for over 20 years. Termites and pests are relentless, but they're no match for Terminix. Contact us today for a free consultation and quote, and let's introduce you to convenience. Protect your premises today. Choose a service provider that persists. Talk to Terminix. Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. Quality for champions. Hey, Ascension! Ascension! Premium quality and style make you stand out all the time Ascension is quality for champions Ascension fit is always right, take your game to higher height Ascension got the quality for champions So everybody say, hey, oh. we wearing Ascension when we play Don't run out on the feeling style What's the brand that we want? Ascension, Ascension, Ascension We wearing what we wearing is Ascension Quality for a champion Ascension, quality for champions.
Ambience. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. Fun DDI experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1-868-634. 1653 Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. With brew. Angus Eve, the new national coach, is here and we are digging deep into his head as he is about to take on a challenge that on paper looks very difficult, but so far he's been talking the talk and getting ready to walk the walk. He's here and we want to just delve in, Angus, to to local football. Um, you've been part of the Pro League system. You've played club football here in Trent Tobago for many, many years. Um, you would have seen it evolve up, down, sideways. We're at a point now in a pandemic that football has suffered as every other industry. But now I think charting the way out of the pandemic where football is concerned, I think is, 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 is becoming a, a major issue. There is no talk of a unified league. What's your vision as national coach? Uh, you, you, you mentioned just at the top before you answer that you are planning to meet with the Pro League coaches. Yes. Is the Pro League still a viable option for, 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 for professional football in Trent Tobago? What of this unified league that is being proposed? Do you have an opinion as national coach now that, that you would like to see the football move in a, in a particular direction? Yeah, I think um, we have to, to, to put away um, our own agendas, and I and I and I want to say this: I empathize a lot with the uh, pro league owners um, who have 
um, contrary to popular belief and things that people will say they have invested a lot of money. Yeah, nothing in this country is ever smooth um, and, 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 and people's names will be bandied about here and there and all that type of thing. But the opportunity that they would have been given the young men is still invaluable. And whether or not the young men get $3,000 or $4,000, um, a lot of them don't have the educational background anyway to go and have a massive job, but God gave them a talent that they could um, home their skills. And that's what the Pro League is about, homing their skills so that they can work towards getting a bigger contract on the outside, which has been happening. So from that standpoint, you know, that has been happening. Um, I, I would say that um, our league um, in its current format is is, 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 is is similar to the what it happens in America. America has an elite league, the MLS, and then they have the USL 1 and 2 and, and I think 3. Uh, below that, there's no promotion or relegation in that system, um, like across the world. Um, but America has the franchise system, similar to what the CPL has going on. Um, basketball, America normally goes to the franchise system. And I think we try to mimic the franchise system. It, it, it probably didn't work. As, as well as we, we think it should. And it's easy now from the franchise system to revert to the, the zonal system. We have six zones. Each team plays in their zones. The winner of each zonal league can go into a six-team playoff. Uh, from that playoff, you, two, the two teams get promoted to what we call the Super League, I would call it the championship. They get promoted to that. The last two teams in the championship get promoted back into whatever zone they would have come from, whether it be north, south, or whatever. The team, but they, so if it's Club Sando in that there, Club Sando goes back into the south zone and try to come back up again. Then you have the, the Premier League, would it be on top? Um, if you want to pay your players, you pay your players. If you want to be semi-pro, you be semi-pro. If you want players who are working, that's your choice. Because we do it already with the defense force and the police. Um, they have jobs and they play football for their, for their jobs. Uh, and the, the two teams in that league, bottom, bottom of two teams, they drop out and top two teams in the championship, what I would call. And there you have your unified league in five minutes. <laughs> so what is all this debate about, Angus? It's the same system in England where they have the premiership, yeah. championship, and all the other divisions below. It's no different. So, but let me just get, get it clear. You kind of you kind of open by just comparing the both system, the franchise system, and then the promotion yeah. relegation system. You are you you're saying at this stage you're supporting you're supporting that promotion relegation system from the zones come up. Yeah, because we because we have a, the franchise system seemingly has not worked. In, 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 it doesn't in general, mean yeah. to say that the franchise teams don't have a place. Mm -hmm. Because I remember I left Defence Force to come to Joe Public which was a franchise type team, but it still had promotion and demotion at that time. And uh, with uh, Joe Public, we, we used to be paid and we were paid as professional players. Um, some of the other teams won't, you know, people, people I played for Trintock. We worked in Trintock and we got salaries. Cleet Morris and all these other guys. Fire Services was in the league. I think Wasa still gives people jobs. Defense Force, as I said. So, that system worked for us in the past. It's when we took the teams and moved them away from the communities, that is when the, the, the support dwindled. We didn't have any support for the teams and the boys who come from a particular community anymore. Um, I remember we they used to call it, um, Joe Public the Eastern, uh, Eastern Lions. Lions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the people in that McCoy area used to come. We weren't from McCoy. Yeah. The players in Manchester United, a couple of them from Manchester, the majority of them from everywhere where we were. The but they identify with the team that is playing in the community. And it's the yeah. same effect here. Do we need to... No, I said you, you rattle it out in five minutes, and I understand <laughs> that. But do we need to... Because, because of that franchise system where we had Pro League teams and Pro League owners owning teams and that franchise system, do we need now to undo that, kind of just tear that, tear that up and, 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 and go back to the communities, as you said, with club teams in, in this country? Well, well, it's the same thing. I mean, um, Rangers has now moved to La Hoqueta. Yeah. They are identified as Rangers La Hoqueta. They have a feel in the community. So the people could identify. Rangers used to be in Port of Spain before, St. Anne's. So they moved the St. Anne's and they relocated them to here. 
So Jablote has a natural community in Sawa. There's pitches in Sawa that they can develop for Jablote to play there. Caledonia in Mova. So it, it's, it's not a difficult task to be done. No, it's not. It's just Andres. the powers that be had to come together and yeah. talk <laughs> and get it, and, you know, get the thing done. You know, we just had to come together. Because, because we heard that, and, and you you and I would have had those type of discussions and debates over the years, and, and we've heard that, and that just has not come to come to fruition. Uh, we're seeing it here, probably a perfect example happening here in La Hoketa with with this Rangers team and, and, and what uh, the, the, the possibilities, the possibilities are, yeah, can be. Yeah. Um, do we have the the, 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 the fortitude and the wear it all to, to, to take this, what we're seeing here, and, and I, spread it through the country? I do think, too, the, the government have to also help because I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that La Hoketa would have had gotten approval for the corporation and stuff like that for the pitch because no team owns the pitches in the communities. Um, for, like Mova, for instance, it have Park Street and it have the one um, in Mova proper by the uh, fire station. You know, one of these can be developed so that Caledonia could play the games there. I remember a couple of years ago, Caledonia playing a game there. It had about 5,000 people. So the people want to come out, but, but it's difficult to go into... Uh, La Hoqueta playing a, a, a home game, for instance, but their home game is in Atoboland Stadium. It's, it's difficult. Um, the normal man just can walk down the road. He might have his kids. It's difficult to get a taxi to reach to that point. So logistics, you know, when we were playing long, long ago, uh, I, I remember the North Zone used to play primary in the Savannah. And so you have St. Francois against Carnage United and, and Belmont against Kokorit and all this kind of stuff. So... Um, I need think, to go back to that. I, I think the people will come back to the football if it's in the in the community. Back to the community. Yes. Um, you're in support of this proposed unified league. Most definitely, I think it's the best way for us to go forward. It it, it, it invokes a lot of interest um, because the demotion and the promotion and demotion system um, it, it, it 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 lends for the colleges league has it actually. Mm -hmm. The colleges league, you're playing the same system. You're playing the zone and. The Colleges League have a lot of support, a lot of sponsorship. You look at the Colleges League teams, and there's a lot of sponsorship on the shirts. There's a lot of sponsorship. There's TV and marketing and, and all these kind of things. So if the College League could do it, uh, why why not the, the senior people? Yeah. Um, does that make what the Pro League is now null and void? I think because the model has not worked, um, I think everybody has given the model enough time to see if it can work, and the model has not worked. And insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and, and expecting a different result, you know. So for me, that would be my recommendation. I would like to see the unified league and um, promotion and demotion under one umbrella, and, um, you know, we go forward there. What's your message to the pro league coaches when you meet with them? Um, I, I have a lot of respect for every pro league coach and every local coach because we continue to develop players with limited resources. Um, coaches normally pump the ball, they throw, they throw the bags, you know, they, 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 they give players money in their pocket when they don't have to come to training. So I just want to really reach out to the guys and, and um, express that um, my heartfelt thanks and, and for all that they have been doing. And, they have been supporting me. I've been getting messages and stuff. And I just wanted to um, give them a bit of respect because a lot of times you're, you're bringing a coach and you don't have a meeting with the coaches. And I feel aggrieved by that um, to hear, you know, what they had to say. If they have an opinion about two players, three players, I think it's, it's only fair um, to do that. Unfortunately, I may not be able to take all the recommendations on board at this point in time. Um, but I see myself as representing them also. The issue of the foreign coach versus the local coach. As I said, we he would have probably sat on panels that we would have had that debate over the years. You know, as I said, wear the hat of the top coach in the country and you are locally bred. The situation now exists that we are in a pandemic and we may not be able to afford a foreign coach. <laughs> yeah. And that worked well for Angus. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still a debate in your mind? Um, do you feel that Angus E will be given the level of respect and regard he deserves as a locally bred coach that would have come through the ranks here in Dran Tobago and now making decisions where our national team is concerned? Or are you fearful in two and a half months 
the powers that be not happy and now looking outside to say we need a, we need we need a foreign coach again. I think Gareth Southgate was coaching England under twenty trees. I think it was uh, Sven Gunn Eriksson or, or Capello. I can't remember yeah, who it was. Yeah. Um, was the head coach and they failed in the World Cup, and they gave him a caretaker manager, local guy. Give him a uh, he never really coached any big teams before. And um, they gave him the opportunity, and he grasped the opportunity with both hands. Um, the other factor is most of the top coaches all over the world, Pep Guardiola, um, Zinedine Zidane, Angelo Pirlo, we could keep calling names, they all started coaching youth teams. Because with youth teams, you actually have to coach. You have to, have to you know, teach people how to pass the ball and how to um, control and how to defend and all that kind of thing. With the older players, they already reach a particular type of level. And it normally is man management and, and, and um, team structure and, and motivation and stuff like that. So I think all of the experiences that I would have had um, would have prepared me for this uh, opportunity. And, and, and at this stage, you're not, you're not worried about the, the talk of a foreign coach coming in? I, know, I think um, I have the jersey, as I said. It's, it's my job to keep the jersey. Uh, my stance on local players opposed to foreign players and foreign coach opposed to local coach is equity. Um, if you're picking a foreign coach, um, a local coach, sorry, or foreign, if you're looking for a coach, give the boat setter people the chance because he's only foreign to us. But if he's if he coming from Wales, he's not really foreign to them. He's foreign to us. So he's a local coach in Wales, but he's a foreign coach to us. Similarly, if I live here and go in Wales and coach, um, I'm a foreign base coach to them. But I'm still a foreign local base coach to us. So, you know, the foreign and local thing, he's coaching where he's coaching. Uh, and I'm coaching where I'm coaching, you know. Um, uh, you just have to get, give people the, the, a fair opportunity. And if the process is right, then I'm good with that. We've been wanting to get into off-the-field matters. <laughs> and when we come back, we head off the field. Because what happens on the field is usually affected by what happens off the field. So we talk about Angus's bosses when we come back in the game with ascension what for champion ascension ascension Bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, 
you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Out fishing with the boys. Or a fun DDI experience with friends. Repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, port charters, port rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1 866 634 1653. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. with brew are we back and angus eve has taken some time to spend with us today uh we're grateful for it he is he's a busy man now has a lot on his shoulder he's not just flipping through channels home in <laughs> lockdown he has to get out there and work because he's not responsible for our national team as we get ready to go into gold cup qualifying uh from the 2nd of june where we face montserrat in our very first game and angus has to get that team ready and raring to go but as we've been saying, I think, hinting through the entire interview so far, Angus, what happens on the field is always affected by what has happened off the field. And uh, I think over the last year or two, we have seen that impact on Transbago's football in a serious way. Um, and sometimes we don't that correlate it and <laughs> tie it together properly, but it really does affect, as you would know, as a player, as a coach now, um, I want to take you back, and, and most people in the game that I've I have spoken to here on this show, I, I like to take them back to that period just before the normalization committee would have been set up. Just to get, because that had split opinions in this country in the footballing fraternity as to whether a normalization committee should have been installed to, 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 to run our game. At that stage of the game, we were in a mess. Football was floundering, FIFA threatening us, and all that was happening back then. Um, what was your thoughts on what was happening in the game back then that led to the normalization committee coming into I was I was a bit torn, to be honest. Um, the, the thought of the country being banned from football um, was, was of paramount for me. Um, to, that was at the top of my head because... You don't like to kill young people's dreams. I, I keep saying that. And um, a lot of the kids, parents, because I coach young people, and a lot of parents say, oh, coach, what would happen? You know, if you get banned, you know, um, would we be able to get scholarships? Would we be able to represent the country? And, and, and that was the cries that I was hearing um, from on the ground. And it seemed to have a, a bit of a, a, a detached uh, from the, the powers that be uh, as opposed to the people on the ground. What the people on the ground wanted opposed to what the powers that be had wanted. And I think for me that was the divide um, 
that that and that was the, to the, the what I had. Um, I thought that they had now won the election um, at the time, and, and they probably should have been given uh, an opportunity to try to fix the problems that they would have encountered. Um, but I was doing an interview day before yesterday, and somebody was trying to um, ask me about the games with, with, that just went with the national team. And I told them that those games happened already. I can't go back and change any of them. So for me to come and chastise uh, Terry is, is a waste of time for me, it's just looking forward. And I thought that uh, when they won the election, they were more studying on prosecuting John Williams as opposed to getting on with the business. Going back and talking about yeah. what happened before yeah. instead of going ahead with the business of football. Yeah. And that and that was a, a, a error in your in, in your in your Yeah, in your you, because yeah. the people would have would, would have spoken. The people voted him out. They they spoke. They they gave you the job. They gave you the mandate to fix. Um they were gravitating so much on John Williams that I think they, they lost sight uh, of the, the, the objectives and then a lot of things that they would have said that they, they, they were going to do. And this is me who, I have a lot of time for uh, Mr. William Wallace and, and I think Keith Lucklaw is a, a brilliant technical mind in football. So there's not me knocking them f in, in that regard, but I just believe that they, they should have just moved on from that and start to operate in the business of football. FIFA did what they did, and as you said, we can't go back and change what happened. And the normalization committee is now here with us um, over the last year and probably for the next at least six months or so, yeah, or yeah. however long there is. March next year, I think, is the, is the, is the date. Um, they would have engaged you. you. Would you would you have had a direct conversation with Mr. Haddad? Of course. Uh, we um, At the point in time, yeah, we would have met the committee, as I said, on the, on, the, on, the, um, on the Sunday afternoon. Um, and they engaged me and asked, if I would, uh, they went through a process and my name came up as the leading candidate and they wanted me to know if I would ac accept the position. So basically they came and asked, um, they knew the, the, the difficulties of the job at the time in such a short space of time. And um, I, I accepted and because and, I, I would always want to help and, and, and to, to try to help develop uh, my country. So, I mean, that's just who I am. So, I just want to see if I can get into that conversation. So, they, they admitted that this is a difficult job that you're facing yeah, yeah, going, yeah, going, yeah. going ahead. I think it's well documented. They did a, a number of interviews where they would have said, you know, we thank it, Angus, for actually coming on board mm -hmm. and, 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 and helping us in this difficult time. You see this as a national duty? Yeah, yeah most you see definitely. This as a national duty. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, uh, said the normalization committee, uh, the people who are running the football, the technical committee that would have spoken to you, understand the job that is facing you at the time, at this time. Um, was that a consideration in terms of your contractual arrangements and your expectations going forward? The contractual arrangements, yeah. And it was also that um, they recently um, got some bad press for picking coaches without process. Yeah. Um, so they were very um, high on, on process. Um, so the process to, to, to hire an interim coach, which is different than when you're looking for a permanent position. You know, the uh, interim coach is a stopgap um, um, position. Mm -hmm. um, there's a void and it needed to be filled now because you have to go and fix the problem now. And then, so in August, come late August, then they will go through the process of trying to do resumes and, and get people in and, and, and try. So that was explained to me. Um, I am a, a stickler for process, so I, I don't have an issue with it. So let, let me just clear that up to the best of our ability here. It, it is clear, clear that two and a half months is what is given to you yeah. to coach this team. Yeah. The job is interim national coach yeah at the end of that two and a half months if i want to coach the national team i can apply and say mr haddad yes i want to coach i don't think i'm gonna, I, I want to take yeah. over but don't call my name not joel no but i know you i had a call i said i'm gonna do a good job <laughs> two games we lost and we should have win and, and yeah. i want to apply yeah, for, the, yeah. for the job no yeah anybody that is what that is yes, what can yes. happen you, at, you, at, because they they want uh, to do due process and i am in full agreement with due process um but as I said, I, I have the first opportunity because I have an, a, a longer interview than most. And, and, and that was also made clear? 
that, that, no, that, no, 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 I'm, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that after two and a half months? That that everybody has to apply again. You, you, you have to reapply. Yes, yes. You have yeah. to reapply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's and that's and that's fair to me. Yeah, to because yeah. that's what we agreed upon. Yeah. Um, the, the, the state of the game in terms of all that has happened off the field of play over the last, let's just say, few months. That that, that let's just go back to Terry Fennick that he has been in charge. Um, are you concerned that 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 based on your meetings with them now? That probably what happened in the last few months will probably change a bit. Are you are you concerned that what happens in that boardroom will affect what goes on in your dressing room? Um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think the problem. The coach runs the dressing room, from what I from what I saw, and um, so I don't think the two things correlate. No. Um, yeah, I don't think it in in that instance which you described. Yeah. I think um, there was a lot of other underlying issues. Um, Let's just use, for instance, um, it seems like the, the staff and the coaching staff, some of the members had a problem with the Rangers and whatever. I recently had a meeting with the Rangers people, and I thought it was very cordial. You know, um, I think we, we in less than, what, half an hour, uh, we understand the objective of the both parties, and, and, and we said, like, you know, going forward, let's let's do it this way, and we, have, we made an agreement. And um, so... I think sometimes it's more about personalities um, than process is, is be, be the issue. That was a major issue. And, and, and we, we're speaking of Rangers, where some of what was considered to be some of the better players in the country was left out of the last team. Um, players that would have been coaching, would have been training. We don't have any football playing, but these, some of these players were playing. Are you saying that you are now open to probably assessing some of these players let's just say at, at rangers I was, it was always um yeah. but that was the case that was the case in the uh, last yeah regime. and i and i said i i can't speak for the last people yeah. um I, I wouldn't even um try to speak for them um but uh i know i mean for instance i call a boy isaiah lee you know i i he was with me at naparima um if you google his naparima career it fan, was fantastic he came uh, from saint augustine he was playing a flanker. I didn't even know him when he came to the school. And when I saw his attributes, I mean, clinically, he was the best striker. And, um, you know, he's, he's gone on. I think he got one cap with Dennis Lawrence. I think it would have been. And then we never saw or hear of him again. But I have been keeping him on the radar. He's one of the players who I think um, can make a difference for the country. And, you know, for the young man career also. Because I know Rangers take care of the players. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm sure he can make more money on the outside and have more opportunities on the outside. So Rangers doing their part in, in developing the player to, to go to a higher level. You are interested in some of the players that are Def at, at La Hogata Rangers Definitely. and will invite them to the national team. Definitely. That's why I met with the members of staff yes. and, and the chairman and the, the board of directors and nice stuff meeting. like that. It was, a, it was a very cordial meeting. Yeah. Um, I thought a lot uh, the chairman tried to get picked on the team, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was very. It was that kind of meeting, you yeah. know. It was a very um, cordial meeting. Yeah. Um, so 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 we can expect going forward that we possibly will see a, a, a different looking national team going into that first game against Montreal. Um, I, I can't promise that. Yeah. Um, but the because, fact that you're interested, I mean, I, I mean, I, I talk yeah, about, yeah. The fact um, you're interested in I'm, other players. I'm interested in a, a lot of other players. There's yeah. some players in the defense force. There's yeah. some players in in some so other teams. So we can't see a new look team, Angus. You, into you, that. you will see some players uh, that, that are being looked at. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you now. We can all get a style. <laughs> you know, um, the, the reality is that the core of the national team that you would have seen play under the last regime. There were things you were happy with, as you mentioned. Yeah. But there were things that you were... Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what, what is one of the main issues you thought that needs improving on, on, on the national team at this stage? I, I was talking to Ansel Elcock and Arnold Dork and um, Anthony Roger and I mean, everybody, we were all speaking and uh, we thought that um, the passion levels, uh, we don't know why, you know, the guys... Uh, um, didn't have that type of passion levels that we normally see from our national team. Because if you look at the game with the um, Bermuda, ba Bahamas. Bahamas, I always say Bermuda, yeah. I don't know why, uh, with Bahamas, is that um, 
that game, you saw, if, I don't know if you saw the end of the game when the Bah Bahamian were walking through the tunnel mm -hmm. and they were punching the sky and they were, that is passion. Um, yeah, we need to see that from our team because we had m way more talent than them, way more. I mean, that goes without saying. But if we had matched their intensity and matched their passion, I thought we'd have win the game very Do you easy. think there's an issue, Angus, in terms of the non-national player, in terms of the psyche of the non-national player? We spoke about you, you spoke about the your, your challenge in terms of bringing the fans back to support. Because I mean, what you hear on the ground is that fans, local fans, are no longer interested. You know, we still have a Toronto Bigo team. I, I hear it all the time. Um, and, and do you think that connects the players hear that? Yeah. Um, how, how, how is how, how is that gap to be bridged? Um, is 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 us um, the staff? I think um, the, the people that I've, I've brought in, I primarily looked at, at past players, yeah. players who played with with the with the with heart and the sleeve, and I think um, I think the players want to represent. I, I I mean I saw the captain Callum Highland was tremendous in the in the second game. You saw the guys was were chasing and running about in the game against Saint Kitts. So. There must have been something that affected the players in the Bahamas. in the Bahamas game over the difference that we saw with them in that other game. And, and I, saw, I thought we saw passion. I thought we saw intensity um, in that last game. So, so it, it, it is there. It is there. It's just to pull it out of that. Angus, if you have two and a half months in this job, whatever happens over the next two and a half months, when you look back, on that two and a half months, what would Angus Eve be happy and pleased with? What would make you happy and pleased with that I went in there and I did what I needed to do? Whatever happens after that, you, you don't have control. But over the next two and a half months, when you look back, what do you want to accomplish? I think um, if I if if people start because although we were we we were we were playing badly, people were still watching the games. Um, but the comments were not good comments and I, I I would go to the grocery I would go to the the pharmacy and and, and stuff like that essential stuff of yeah, course you don't, you don't, you don't know <laughs> <laughs> <Of essential laughs> stuff. and you will hear you know people will, because they know I, I have a pass in the game yeah. so they would stop me and say, oh gosh boys when all used to play you know that type of thing I, I don't want them to say when all used to play anymore I want to hear oh them boys will they, they fight the game you could see that passion you could that is, if I could get that, then uh, the people can visibly, because the football field is a big pitch. You can't hide on a football field. Your job is in the open. So if I could get that and hear people start to talk about that and get back that passion, then I would have done the job. Montserrat is objective one. What's, what, what's, what's, what's the plan for Montserrat? <laughs> uh, there's a... Um, question that I can't so on, on screen, um, but um, we need to win the game. Uh, we need to go and put our best foot for how we're going to do it. We're going to discuss that. We're going to go through what we have to do to get to that point. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, we, we need to win that game. You know, We need to, to, to go as far as possible in the tournament with, the, with what the time would be allowing us to do. Um, it, it, as you said, a number of times it's a difficult job uh, I wouldn't accept the job if I don't feel that I can do the job uh, but it, it, I think the objective is um, to try to qualify for the group stage and, and that's the first um, hurdle that I would like to cross. When are you naming a team? Um, that's next week Monday next week. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think that uh, the people of the country should know what is happening with their team um, this is not my team, this is our team, and I'm going to be as transparent as possible. I'm not going to give you how we're going to play. You try to get that out to me, but name under the team and stuff like that, I, I, I don't see what is the secret in it, um, because the, the, you have the um, Senator to CONCACAF anyway by next week, Monday. So the other teams will know, everybody will know the players that you have on the sheet. So hiding it from our public, I don't think it's the right thing to do. But well, surely best, my brother. Um, as I said, new direction, new phase in, in Trans Vegas football. Um, two and a half months, you have accepted that responsibility and that challenge. Let's see how it goes from here. Yeah. 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 Angus Eve, spending some time, got into his brain a bit. Um, see how he's thinking. He's a player, 
that represented us with heart and soul, he now has the job of leading our national team as coach. And we see where this goes on his journey and our next journey when it comes to football here in TNT. That's been the Ascension Football Show for uh, this week, guys. We want to thank Angus for spending some time with us and answering some of the difficult questions and dealing with some of the difficult issues that are facing football at this time. I'm Joel Villafano. We'll see you back here next week. Mm -hmm.